Hey, so I am back. I don't know if um, anyone's gonna get this because it took me so long after I told people that I was going live to um, get on here, but hopefully uh, there's no issues. Oh, hey. Um, welcome back. And I just want to really quick, sorry, have denim folding in my face. Um, I just want to touch base first on the projects that we have been working on together over the past few days. I think this is day number four of going live with you. Um, and I'm so proud of myself for like how much I've been getting done and um, just like actually going live for the last four days in a row. It's for me, it feels significant. Um, and also I'm doing my best to be better. Yesterday, people were very annoyed that I wasn't keeping up with the chat. So here I go. So, okay, let's not play it out loud on here. Um, but so now I actually am trying. I have like the messages readable on my screen. Um, but anyways, as far as it go as the projects that I have been previously working on in these videos go, goes, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> um, maybe it's because it's so late. But so the first thing that we started working on was my Trace Nula blouse, the Felicity blouse, I believe. And I am still working on that one. Um, no progress made, I didn't work on it last night. So my update from yesterday is still where it stands. But as far as these stools go, where are they? Where's one of them? The first stools, I'm not gonna literally show you all four, but I promise you, I've actually finished all four stools now. I am so shocked because that's something that's been like sitting on my shelves half done for probably three months now. And it just feels awesome that it's just one more or one less thing to worry about. And then another thing that I got done, which I was not expecting to, is um, I sewed one more of these masks for my grandma, a black one. It's thicker, it's cotton, so it's a totally different um, material and type of the other one that I sewed, but the same structure. And I washed both of them and I plan on mailing them out tomorrow. So yeah, that I also got done today. So I'm excited about that. And what else have we been working on? The blouse, the mask, and the stools. Okay, so that's three days. Um, and I feel like even just the fact that there's blouse is the only one left and it's such a minor thing is awesome. So today we are gonna start on a totally new project. And I'm really excited because it's something I've been wanting to do for at least a month and a half now. It's kind of a new idea I had, um, but it's a pair of ultra high-waisted jeans because I don't know if you're someone that loves high-waisted denim, but I honestly don't like to wear anything but high-waisted anymore. So I've shopped a lot, a little, I need to slow down because I really <laughs> cannot. Um, I've shopped around to pretty much any store that sells denim that I can go into looking for high-waisted denim in the past. And honestly, like most of the time, I'm pretty disappointed. Even if they seem perfect in the store, upon washing, I rarely am pleased with what happens to high-waisted denim lately. Um, Probably if you get vintage denim, it could be different. Um, and I think that's mainly because of the amount of elastic that's in a lot of our denim nowadays. But as far as like um, fast fashion goes and like regular retailers, what's available is just not what I'm looking for. So I am looking for a high-waisted denim that one does not shrink like after I you know, put it on the first time. I'm hoping that I can wash it and it's not going to shrink up on me and no longer be high waisted. Um, I honestly think it's almost worse to have like 
lackluster high waisted where it's like what is it like mid rise it ends up being mid rise after you wash it rather than high waisted than to just have like a low rise jean because like what is mid rise it's not you can't wear a crop top with it it just looks it's just whatever and i refuse to be whatever so i want to make these ultra high-waisted jeans so that no matter what crop top i wear no matter how short it is um it's gonna look great it's not gonna show like too much of my midriff and yeah that's what i'm kind of going for i'm the type of person that i like to be very fun fashionable kind of weird but i really don't like to show off too much skin so that's why i am looking to do an ultra high-waisted and how i'm gonna go about it honestly you're just gonna see the whole process here because i have not started this project at all the only thing i have is about a month and a half ago let's see if there's a date on here um yeah probably like a month ago month and a half ago is right because this last date is like mid-february but I drew out a sketch and so I have a rough idea of my head of what I want it to be and pretty much I want it to be because um, I feel like my sketch is not going to tell you very much of anything. <laughs> I'll just describe it to you. I want it to be very, very fitted um, and I want it to start probably like right here fitted. And then as it's fitted like right to here and then it starts to flow out a little bit. Um, it's going to be like a flare pant, like at the bottom, but more of like a boyfriend, like skater chick vibe flare, like really relax. Some think urban, but then the top is super duper fitted. And, um, the way that I'm going to achieve this is by cutting these two pairs of denim into panels. And so... I'm pretty sure looking at this and actually let me get, oh, here's a color pencil. So looking at this, I want to say every side of the pant has three panels. So the front left is three panels. The front right is three panel front back three front or did I just repeat front, right? Whatever. The back two sides each have three, left and right side, each three panels, same for the front. So do the math on the total number of panels. Um, so I just colored it in every other panel just so in my mind I can remember that it's three panels on each part. but. I actually don't think that's how I want to do it. I don't want it to be every other panel a different color. I just, I want the two side panels that are going to meet at the side seam on both sides to be the same color. And then I want the back and the front. So there's going to be four panels across the front and four panels across the center back. Those are each going to be, are all going to be the same color. Hey, Maura, welcome to the live stream. So, <clears throat> so let's see. The next step, we kind of have our plan, somewhat bare minimum plan here. But um, the next step I like to do, just so I kind of get a feel for how much fabric I have, is I'm going to start deconstructing these pants, which involves cutting them apart. So I'm going to take or need two things in order to do this. I need a really good pair of shears. Hey, I'm so excited for them too. And honestly, um, my goal with these is to create a pattern where we can like potentially, you know, make replicas of these pants. So we're going to start by just deconstructing the pants and making them flat pieces of fabric. Um, but then we're going to make a pattern, and once we have that pattern, like, we can remake these as many times as we want. Hopefully, as long as they fit well. It's probably going to take a couple live streams um, or, and some work off of the live stream to make these. 
Hey, Rosie. Thank you for joining the live stream. I don't know if you're going to be as interested in these high-waisted jeans as me and Mora, but um, hopefully you will because, honestly, they're going to look so awesome. So I'm very excited. And what I'm cutting right now, um, or, like, as far as the jeans go, what I chose – Sadly, all of the jeans that I absolutely hate because I'm a hoarder. So I've probably like 35 pairs of denim at least. But the ones that I really don't like aren't in my New York apartment. They're in my house in Florida. So I had to use like denim that I wasn't so sure I want to cut. Um, I chose a blue one because I want the side panel to be blue. And then the rest of the pants are going to be black. Um, the reason I'm doing the blue on the side is because these are going to be more flattering. If the darker color is in the middle, then obviously um, it's going to slim you a little bit. Maybe not obviously. Actually, I was thinking about it. I'm pretty sure if the darker color, because there's more. There's four panels of the black and only two panels of the blue. So they should be a little bit slimming, um, which... I prefer. If someone else is going to wear them, then maybe they don't want them to be so slimming, but they will actually make you look a little bit hippie just because the blue is going to be on the side. So it is going to draw attention to the side, sadly. But some people like that, so it's fine. Um, and yeah, the reason I chose... <laughs> yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Maura said she wants them to be more hippie. <laughs> um, so right now I'm just cutting them all apart. But the reason I chose these black Zara jeans, which I actually love, I know I was complaining about not being able to find nice high-waisted pants. Um, and these aren't perfect at all, these Zara jeans. Of course you do, Rosie. Um, we'll do our best with yours. Your, your body's a bit more of like a tree trunk, so it's going to be a lot harder to do anything with it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, these are jeans. I actually really like them, but it turned out I had like four pairs in my closet and these one have a broken zipper. So that's why I'm cutting these ones up. It's interesting doing this live stream at night since I think all three of the other live streams I've done or I did at almost the exact same time. So I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I felt like I had such a productive day um, waiting to do the live stream until later. I sewed so much like I was talking about um, and I sent this email to my management company of my building. Um, that was really important. I was kind of putting it off for a long time. Um, and it just involved like being really, really thorough. And um, I had to do like some research, look some stuff up, take some photos, just do a bunch of stuff for it. Um, but just the fact that I was able to do that and I was able to um, uh, do a few other miscellaneous things and then also sew all of those things that I talked about earlier was just awesome. But now I'm kind of feeling like I don't want to sew anymore because I already have been sewing since I first woke up, but that's okay. It feels good to be productive because I feel like lately I really haven't been that productive at all. And I'm wondering how everyone else is feeling because it's a very interesting time. Like my job itself is irregular. It's, oh, let me plug in my phone. Um, it's irregular. I don't have like the same type of schedule as everybody else. So I don't work a nine to five and there's, this is annoying. 
there's times when I'm off for like multiple, like for practically a week straight. And then there's other times where I work two weeks straight and I have very little time to myself. So it totally just depends, but I have, feel like I have barely been working at all, which makes sense. You know, most people aren't working at all. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> I thought I could just flip. I thought my phone would just automatically flip the chat, but it won't. Okay. But yeah, like I was saying, um, most people are off right now, which is why I'm interested in seeing how people are feeling about being off. I know most people, like when they're off, they're off. They don't have to really worry. They're not working. But for me, when I'm off from my day job, I feel, I just feel so guilty if I'm not productive because, um, my day job isn't really what I want to do. I would much rather be finding some sort of success, selling, making clothes, working on creative projects like short films or movies, you know, some sort of creating. And I do all the time um, work on projects, but like I've said in pretty much all my other live streams, it feels like I barely ever sew. So for the most part, these last like couple weeks that I've been off have felt really, not really, but like slightly draining. Like I haven't been doing what exactly I want to do. And this past week, I feel like has been very different. I've really been putting a focus on creating things and it feels good. It feels really, really good, especially today. I feel like today has been one of the most satisfying days. I pretty much because I don't feel like sitting there and like taking all this thread out um, on the side seam. And I'm so sorry. I keep saying um so much. It's such a bad habit and I'm going to try to be better. But yeah, I don't want to take all this stitching out because that's honestly going to take such a long time and I feel like it's unnecessary. So I am just cutting off. I'm cutting off, cutting out, like completely cutting the side seam out on both sides. I'm not leaving it on either side of the fabric. Sometimes you can leave it because you can just like use it as seam allowance, sew over it, different things. But in this case, I feel like, no, we don't want to do that. And now I keep switching this between scissors because it just totally depends which one feels comfortable in my hand. Um, and generally... It's gonna be these ones just because the jeans are kind of intricate and it's just easier to use a smaller scissor. One thing I might take off using the seam ripper is going to be, not might, I think I am gonna do it. I wanna take these little um, belt loops off because I could always use those like at the end to add a little detail to make them, you know, look like your typical denim. It kind of takes quite a bit of time to take things apart in a nice way, like where you're going to be able to reuse them. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised if almost this entire hour live stream is just me deconstructing the denim. But if that's the case, then I'll probably do my next live stream working on the same pair of pants. I'm genuinely so excited about these, by the way. If, it, if I didn't seem that excited before, I'm genuinely so excited.
So on the topic of just being at home, kind of by yourself doing nothing, because I'm kind of honestly, even though I'm still working, because technically, again, I stated yesterday, if um, if my phone rings and I just like run out of the room and abandon the stream, it's because I'm still on call for work. So I could work at any moment, but I expect to be off because no one's really flying anywhere. Last time I was um, at work, the only people I seen at the airport were basically flight attendants and there was a lot of us. Um, but as far as being home, like I really just don't wanna go out anywhere. I feel kind of freaked out because I don't know. I don't know why I've, I've freaked myself out in this way, but I just, I think it's because I had a sinus infection. Like when I got, went back to work the first time last week, um, probably like five days ago. And it got really bad. Like when I was working and I was just so scared of calling out. I was so scared just because I wasn't, I was already flying. So I was afraid to call out and then possibly like getting stuck somewhere them wanting to, to test me for the virus and whatever that now I'm just like, I don't even want to leave the house. Like, what if I have this? Like, I don't think I do at all. I'm not showing any signs. There's no reason to think this, but I'm just like, they keep saying like you could have it and not be showing signs. And I am such a guilt, like filled human that like, I'm terrified of, being the person that's like giving it to someone else. <laughs> I'm not even like concerned about myself. I'm just like terrified of someone being like, you are the one that did this. Like, or them like being on a trip, like a work trip and then being tested for it and then being like, you had it this whole time. You've infected all these people. So I just stay home as I generally would anyways, because I'm typically a homebody and I really enjoy it. But it's just weird, like, not even wanting to, like, go to the store. Like, if I'm staying home and I'm not really doing anything, I at least, like, go get coffee or go to the store a couple times a day. I don't just, like, usually stay in my apartment for days on end. Um, so it's interesting, and I wonder, like, what other people are doing besides just trying to be as productive as possible. Um, I've been trying to listen to more podcasts and I found a couple really good ones. So I don't know if you guys are like into them, but there's this one um, brand new podcast that uh, this actor is doing with his wife, who's a writer and it's called staying in um, with Emily and Camille, I believe. And they're only going to do it during um, the pandemic, like while we're like in quarantine so that they can raise money actually. Um, and it's really nice. Um, it's just them, their story. If you know anything about the movie, The Big Sick, if you've seen it, it's um, based or that movie is based on their life. Like um, the wife, Emily, she actually had, she wrote that movie about the situation that they went through, um, when they started dating, which if you haven't, um, seen the movie before, pretty much she falls ill while they're dating and ends up in a coma and it's early on in their, in their relationship. So he doesn't know what to do when he finds out, like, should he be around or should he just be like, all right, let me, let me find a different girl. Like she's obviously not the one, but no, he does end up stay, staying around. And, um, it's like a really touching story because obviously she ends up being okay, but now they're dealing with this for the rest of their life. They, you know, they actually ended up getting married and everything. So this virus is hitting them extra hard just because, um, she is really susceptible to getting sick. She has a weakened immune system because she has a, um, a pre-existing uh, illness. And um, yeah, so they kind of just talk about that and they talk about what they do 
when they're stuck at home and just give tips and it's super relatable in a way like also not in a way because I don't have an underlying condition or someone that I'm terrified for but um it's just really interesting it's a good podcast and another podcast I found I don't know if this one would be as interesting or relatable to people because it's by two flight attendants so I feel like I love it a bit more than most might because I am a flight attendant so I can really really relate but they talk about a lot of interesting topics um that aren't specifically based on flight attendants I feel like actually probably just like when I was scrolling I've only listened to a couple episodes but when I was scrolling through it only looked like maybe one in like 20 was specifically about flight attendants and it's called fruit snacks and I found that one on Apple Podcasts, and it's super good. Well, actually, I lied. That Fruit Snacks one was recommended to me by a fellow flight attendant, um, but I listened to it on Apple Podcasts. Um, and the one, I, the episode I listened to on that was called Encoding, I think. Yeah, I know. I absolutely love Fruit Snacks. <laughs> But I don't think that's why it's called Fruit Snacks. I actually thought of when I seen, heard the name and seen the title, I was, or heard the, heard the name and seen the cover, I was thinking of um, Walking Produce. I, it reminded me of that, which is um, a group that some of you that are watching I know are a part of. But if you don't know what Walking Produce is, it is a... Um, group of four creators, I'm one of them, that create, or they don't really create for the group, but we hold each other accountable um, via our Instagram and our YouTube channel. Each one of the four of us own a week of the day, or a day of the week. There you go, you can talk. <laughs> uh, a day of the week. And we pretty much just hold each other accountable. We started a podcast together where we talk about what it's like to be a young creator. And it's been interesting so far. Like, I feel like in the beginning, it was a lot of like, not, um, at least on my end, it was a lot of me saying, I don't have time for this or... I let myself down again. I didn't accomplish this. I didn't accomplish that. And now, like, I feel like consistently every week having to say, like, I didn't meet my goal has pushed me to really put myself first and make sure that I now actually meet the goals that I put put out for myself. So hopefully, you know, it continues to go that way and it really helps us to um, further our creative endeavors. But on top of it, I feel like it's just quite enjoyable to like have other people to lean on because sometimes when you're a creative person in a creative field where you're kind of like making your own path, it can be a little bit lonely if you don't have other people that are doing it with you. Like if you're kind of like, it's your own business like you're the only one a part of it you don't have employees or anything it's just you and you don't have a partner it can definitely be a bit hard at times especially if you don't have someone to bounce ideas off of and you're unsure not sure of something even though the people in this group are in completely different industries um they're still a great source of um feedback and advice and always a good place to like bounce ideas off of. So if you are interested in the walking pros at all, our podcast, um, it's our second episode. It does come out this weekend on Sunday. So you could check that out. Okay, we got a waistband.
I feel like doing things like this can be so therapeutic because it's just mindless work. And this is my favorite time. If I wasn't live streaming and pretty much just talking to myself for an hour, I would be listening to a podcast. Um, I find like for myself personally, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm more productive if I'm listening to people like talking while I work rather than listening to music. So, okay, I am actually not going, I'm glad I actually like thoroughly thought about this before I cut this. I am not going to cut the center of this yet because I don't know if I have to. I might be able to just take this zipper out and add in a longer zipper after I like sew everything together. So I might just keep like, these pieces and add the side pieces to them. Although there is this kind of weird thing happening here in the middle. So it's like pulling a little bit because I probably stretched them out and overly wore them. Hmm. So actually I might hate that. I'm gonna wait until the very end to cut that though because I'm not sure if I want to. Okay, where is this? Another thing I would recommend you do if you're um, home and you don't really know what to do next with yourself, um, especially if you're looking for any movies to watch. Last night, me and my brother watched um, two movies back to back that were so good and it was so interesting because um one of them was definitely like a remake or a modernization i guess you could call it of the other one and they're lesser known films and it wasn't it's not like an apparent thing it's not like you know zoolander 2 like it's where it's like specifically based on this or an extension of this specific movie. It was more like the director was really in love with the movie that was based on, the original movie I think was made in 1983 and it's called The Big Chill. And if you know anything about it, let me know. Um, Cause I'm just speaking from what I was told about it and from what I know from watching the films, but the Big Chill is a film about um, a bunch of college friends that reunite after one of their friends commits suicide. And I believe the age range is they're they're in their like mid to late 30s when they meet up again because they all have like families. Um, some of them have kids that are like not that young. And they seem like they're pretty successful and well off at this point in their life. And the idea is that they all kind of disconnected after college and now they're reuniting after such a long time and also kind of grappling with like why their friend killed themselves and if it was, you know, could have been their fault or like if they could have prevented it if they were still in their life and that sort of thing. And pretty much it just turns out like all of them are a mess. And I don't want to give away too many spoilers because I honestly think you should watch this movie, uh, specifically this one, the original one. I prefer the original one. I feel like my brother preferred the modernization just because he was already in love with the modernization ahead of time. And this was both of both of us had seen the other one the new one um but i hadn't seen the new one in a long time which is why i wanted to rewatch it last night um but neither of us had seen the big the big <laughs> the big chill so um yeah check it out these people are insane like the things the things they ask of their friends 
you you could not get away with asking this nowadays. You just could not. And I, I don't want to ruin it for you guys. So I don't want to say, but it's just crazy. And so I feel like when the new director made, wrote and made, um, it's called About Alex, which is the modernization of it. Because in the original movie, the person that commits suicide, um, his name was Alex. And literally... It's so awesome. Like, I recommend if you guys are going to watch these movies, you have to watch them back to back because then you pick up things so quickly, like that are homages to the original film. So the film of this, the second film's name is, is about Alex. And in the opening scene of the big chill, the priest says something of, along the lines of, this is about Alex, um, which, you know, is obviously how they came up with the name of the, the new one. So anyways, it's just, the new one is completely different, which is why you can watch them back to back and not be bored. In the new one, they actually don't have the friend die. He had, and this isn't giving anything away. I'm pretty sure if you like, read the description of the film, I would say this, but he had a, a suicide attempt in about Alex and um, he doesn't actually um, die, but all the friends still come and they like are trying to be his support system, but none of them again have seen each other in such a long time. And so they're all kind of, again, dealing with such weird issues and like just asking so much of each other and just putting each other in weird situations and it's just super interesting but again the best part is seeing like all of the homages to Big Chill in About Alex um and kind of seeing like how um the characters like how they remade the characters into like completely different roles. So if you're at all into film, check these films out. The first one was made in 1983 and it's called the big chill. And the second one is called, um, about Alex, just about Alex, not uh, about Alex. I'm so annoyed with myself that I keep saying, um, Thanks, Joe. And thank you for joining the stream. I'm shocked that you're on here. So I feel like definitely as I'm watching the time, we have about 20 minutes. So most likely I'm just going to get to deconstructing them. And then tomorrow I'll um, maybe uh, if I don't get to working on any of the pattern in this live stream, maybe I'll prep the pattern um, before the live stream tomorrow so that then I can just show you how to how the pattern looks, how I made it, and 
how to cut out the fabric and put it all together so that we can actually sew in another one of these live streams because so far this is um sew with me number four and i feel like i've only actually sewn in a live stream like actually sewn for more than five seconds one time but that's fine i feel like i've been like accomplishing so much even though i'm not sewing also i feel like it's kind of good just because I don't know if the sewing machine is like super loud and annoying. We're still gonna do it either way, but I'm just saying it's probably better doing it a bit a bit less. Okay, these belt loops are so annoying. Like, do I actually need them? The main thing I hate about using the seam ripper when something is like this is tacked together and it's kind of like really stuck on there. I'm so clumsy and just like rough that I just keep stabbing myself in the hand. I'm not making any sort of notion of that. I'm holding it all inside, but just know I have stabbed myself with this thing multiple times. <laughs> I should probably mention why I'm so obsessed with upcycling lately because it's pretty much all I do now. I've kind of made a I don't know like a agreement with myself to not buy any more fabric unless it's completely necessary but so far since I've told myself to no longer buy fabric I have not bought fabric I'm pretty sure at all um and I'm doing that for a couple of reasons one because I'm trying to be like more aware of the amount of waste that goes into um, the fashion industry today. I don't really want to be a part of the fast fashion industry. That is obviously like the best way to make money in fashion is to work for like a brand that puts out a lot of collections or to put out, you know, as many collections in a year as possible, as cheaply as possible. Um, but there's a couple of sides to it that I don't like. One, I don't really like the idea of taking so much inspiration from big designers and just ripping off their ideas. I understand like how fashion works and um, that we have always looked to the high-end designers for what the trends are going to be for the season. There's a difference between gathering inspiration and literally knocking off high fashion where the, the item is almost a replica. I don't believe in that part and I also don't believe in the idea of people buying something for one seat single season and then having to get rid of it for the next season rather than just saving it for next year or even finding a way to work those items into your next season's wardrobe um, because honestly there's it's not that hard you can take a spring dress and wear it in the fall throw a chunky sweater on top like there's so many things you could do to make it look really cool and not awkward. I know there's certain pieces that, you know, would be more difficult to do that too, but honestly, I, I probably could do it, <laughs> but <laughs> just saying. But in those cases when you can't, like for example, a bathing suit, obviously you're not gonna wear that down the street in the middle of the winter, but you don't have to throw it out and not wear it next year. Especially if you're like me and you barely go swimming, like 
you can keep a really nice high quality bathing suit, even not super high quality bathing suit. Go, you can even buy from Target and it can last. You don't have to be so wasteful. And I feel like some of, um, or not some of, but like the reason I started thinking about this was just seeing so many people. Like um, I watch vloggers a lot, um, YouTubers that kind of like film their whole life. And I see a lot on there and also just in social media in general of like people who acquire so much fast fashion throughout the year and then they donate it all to charity so that the next year they can start over the next season they can completely start over and i feel like people think because they're donating it to goodwill or whatever charity they choose that like that's not waste but it is it is waste like that we create so much waste in the US that um, these type of like charity shops like Goodwill and Salvation Army, like they have to like burn the excess clothes like when it eventually doesn't sell in their stores or no one else can take it. Or like they actually take like truckloads of their clothes and bring them to foreign countries and like drop them off so that they could have like clothes and goods there as well. But it's to the excess that those foreign countries, like those poverty stricken countries that these companies bring the clothes to, don't even want our stuff anymore from America because we waste so much that it's too much for them. Like they're just like, no, we have enough. We don't want your trash. And so I just, I really would like more people to consider that we don't need so many items of clothing. I can definitely admit that like when I put myself in the environment where I'm constantly going to the store and I'm constantly looking at what's out there, the want is there. Like, yes, there are so many new cute pieces every single day that I could acquire. But is it necessary? Like when I go in my closet, is it impossible to find something to wear? No. And like, I have a lot of clothes, I will admit. But like, I also take some of my clothes and I hide it. Like I put it in tokens. I don't look at it until like next year, this season, or even sometimes I wait like a whole year and then I'll come back to it. Sweaters, different types of pants. And that makes those clothes feel new again so that you don't have to constantly be um, throwing out your clothes or like giving them to Goodwill or whatever you do with them um, and buying new. Because for me, it's not only about the waste, but it's also about like constantly having to spend your money on like new clothing. I totally understand if, you know, you get holes in your favorite pair of jeans, like say in the crotch, maybe you need to buy a new pair of jeans. <laughs> if your only jeans have holes in the crotch, um, maybe you could fix them. You could definitely, you know, try that. But I understand sometimes it's a necessity. You do need things. It's just the access where like you have to constantly fill your clothes with fast fashion and then get rid of it and get all new. And another thing that like really kind of bothered slash intrigues me is like the idea of a capsule wardrobe, but where these like the new like concept of a capsule wardrobe, I feel like by young people in social media is not to like just acquire the best pieces and like create this beautiful um high quality wardrobe over time slowly it's more to just buy a bunch of fast fashion that looks great together for the season and then trash that and then next season get a new capsule wardrobe and then every season like so you always have only say like 30 pieces or whatever you consider your capsule wardrobe but is it 
that is not the point of a capsule wardrobe. The point of a capsule wardrobe is to slowly develop your wardrobe where like you don't have to like constantly be shopping because you have everything you need and you like everything you have like thought went into it. And my friend Mora, who I think is on the stream, like she's the one that like originally would do this. And like when we worked together in retail, kind of put this in my head. And since we started working together, I feel like I have developed like a true capsule wardrobe. Yes, in the beginning of this video, I did say that I had like 35 pairs of denim. <laughs> and I've also said that I put some of my clothes like into tote bins and then pull it out later. So I don't just have 35 pieces. But I don't throw my clothes away and then, you know, go and get a whole new wardrobe. I have staple pieces that like have taken me season to season for years. And I don't care that like there's so many pictures of me in the same sweater or the same blouse because they wear well. I literally put so much thought into, you know, this is the one that's right for me because the majority of my clothes are these colors and I know that it's going to match everything. And my, my pieces do like I can just grab three things out of my closet at random and almost always they're going to go together. And I just think that's awesome. So that's kind of, I'm not judging people. I know this sounds like a speech and that I'm putting so much judgment on other people, but it's more like, that's just not how I want to live. And I want to create a brand of clothing that means something. So that's why I'm just kind of trying to explain, like, I'm trying to go against all of that. I would rather only use upcycled materials, which means using clothes I already own, clothes I've thrifted, fabric I already own. So some of it is fabric, but it's stuff that I already own or fabric that I acquire in some other way. Like maybe I'll get bedding fabric from a thrift store and use that. Um, but just trying to be like a little bit more thoughtful and less wasteful. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how it came about. And I've been doing this probably for a year now, um, at least, where I haven't been buying fabric and I've only been using um, upcycled items to make my collections. And I've actually used it to not only make pieces for myself, but also pieces for music videos. I've used it um, to, for pieces that I'm doing for a couple short films. And I'm really excited to kind of challenge myself in that way because it's actually a lot easier than people make it seem. My goal when I'm upcycling though, and I think this is very important to distinguish, is I don't, I, I would like to tell people like that I'm upcycling all my clothes. I do put that out there, but I don't want it to be obvious. Like, I don't want you to look at my clothing and think, oh, it's a bit like just thrown together. I can tell she had a corduroy jacket and a denim jacket and she just took the, the front buttons off and sold them on top of the denim jacket. I want it to be a lot harder to tell what it originally came from. And I feel like so far, um, slowly but surely, it is taking me a while <laughs> to make some stuff because I do put a lot of thought and a lot of like, just effort into trying to make it perfect. Um, but I feel like I am slowly but surely achieving that goal of like m m making it kind of difficult to tell that it was upcycled or at least to be able to tell like what the items once were. I hope it doesn't sound too much like I'm, you know, attacking anyone or like putting anyone down for thinking differently. I just would like to kind of put that, I, those kind of thoughts out there. And like, because some people just might've never thought of it that, you know, 
even though it's going to Goodwill, because I know everyone thinks, well, I'm giving it to a charity shop. That's great because then, you know, people that, you know, might not be able to afford it originally now has that have access to it, but it's still in some way creating waste. You know, if you're just, it's not unnecessary to buy so much. I, I think you should be able to write down, like you, we should all maybe challenge ourselves to sit down and write out all of the thing, like clothing and shoe purchases we've made over the past year. And if that's too, if there's too much that's been made, maybe just six months. But for me, I could easily do, write down every single piece of clothing I've bought in the, in the past year and including shoes. And I don't think it would fill up a piece of notebook paper because I just, it's so interesting because I used to be so different. And that's why um, I like to talk about it because I just feel like I'm so happy that I've like discovered this um, and that I've changed my mind where I don't need everything that I see that's attractive because it's something like, that's just instant gratification, but that excitement and love for the item, it doesn't always last. It doesn't last if you, if you didn't truly like need the item and like, it's not like adding anything to your wardrobe. So I would definitely challenge you to think about, really think about, or even write down everything you've bought in the past year and whether or not you actually use all those items if they actually add something to your current wardrobe. And again, I am kind of sorry if this video is a little bit boring because I'm not doing any sewing at all. I'm literally just deconstructing denim, literally just ripping off a million belt loops over and over again. But the next one will be awesome because we will get to make these pants and hopefully even try them on at the end of next live stream. This one's really hard to get off. Okay. Put up a fight. Okay, so we are almost done deconstructing them. So I'm going to deconstruct them completely on here so that we can just start on the next step on the next live stream. And again, thank you guys so much for like actually joining me on these little rambly sewing sessions because I cannot believe any of you are still watching this and it's kind of awesome. So thank you so much because it's so motivating. And definitely let me know if you have any um, movie recommendations because I think I'll probably watch another movie tonight, if not a couple, because I feel like I've been so productive today. I'm so excited after this live stream. I probably just want to sit down and watch a bunch of movies in a row obsessively. So these denim ones, um, I'm going to cut them completely apart. Remember on the black ones, I left the middle um, attached. But on these ones, these are going to be the side seams. So I definitely do want to cut them completely apart. Also, I would like to note to each their own, but I really hate this... Um, I can't think of right now what it's called, but this like color, whatever it is, color of denim. 
there's a word for that. It's not color. Wash. This wash of denim. Hate it. It's honestly hideous. And I questioned whether I should use it for these pants because I'm so excited about these pants. I desperately want these pants like to actually wear them. And I hate this wash so much. But I think with the black and the fact that it's only the side seam, hopefully it's fine. <laughs> hopefully. Also, I'm like, this is like the guinea pig, the test subject. Like this one might come out eh, not the best because it's the first one and we have to work out the kinks of the pattern. Um, so maybe I don't want to use my favorite pieces of denim yet. We have two seams left. It only took me an hour to cut two pairs of denim. That feels excessive, but I don't know. If you do this, let me know how long it takes you. <laughs> Stand up because that the scissors are so heavy, they're like hurting my hand. So, again, the reason I'm cutting these completely apart right now is because I know that I'm going to be making these pants out of panels, so I don't need any of the crotch area to be intact. This is garbage. Try to keep it um, neat and orderly as you work. I'm horrible at this, but it is always nice if you keep it pretty orderly so that you have like a trash pile and then you have the um, pile of stuff you're actually gonna use. And sometimes you don't know if you're gonna use something. Like, we don't know if we're gonna use this fly, so I'm just gonna hold on to it, just in case. Most likely not, but when you're upcycling, you never really know, so we'll keep it just in case. After I do a project like this, I do like to go through, um, and make sure I throw out everything, not throw out, but like recycle if you can, but everything that I can't use on a later project. If it's like this and it's like stringy, unless you have an idea of how to like 
you know, something that's going to need tassels or something, just get rid of it just because you're going to end up building up so much debris like over time of like little scraps from this and that. And you always think kind of like how we hoard clothing think, oh, well, you know, I never know when I might need those denim scraps for something. When the day comes and you actually need those denim scraps for something, you will be able to find whatever you need with what you have. You don't need to save every single scrap you've ever had. It's such a waste and it just makes your plate. I'm finally on the last strip of denim. I just have one seam left to cut away and then we are going to have all of our fabric ready um, to work on these on the next live stream. So it definitely, you know, upcycling does add a lot of time to the project. I mean, not a lot, but I mean, if, for these, it literally added an extra hour to the production of it. But what is an hour in exchange for literally not having to pay for any materials at all? And for taking like, and for actually being able to make use of something that you didn't previously use. Like the black Dara pants, I love them, but I also already own four pairs of those same pants. And these ones had a broken zipper. And normally I'd say fix the broken zipper if you love them, but I already have four pairs of those exact pants. So, you know, we're making use of what we have. We literally didn't have to pay for anything. It's totally worth that extra hour. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for coming on this um, journey of literally just cutting up denim with me and not really getting anywhere yet. But um, Definitely, if you are interested, these are going to be ultra high-waisted jeans um, in the end when they're all put together, um, and they should look really amazing. I'm super excited about them. Again, they're super high-waisted, so they're going to come all the way up to here. They're going to be fitted until the upper thigh, and then they're going to become flared, kind of like skater style, um, really casual, um, loose denim, and in... In my head, I'm probably gonna like roll them when they're completely done. Uh, that's the vibe I'm going with, but we'll see how they turn out. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna actually see how they actually turn out, check back in tomorrow. I should be, probably should be <laughs> doing a live stream. I am on call, so sometimes, you know, things happen and I won't be able to come on, but if I'm live, then we will hopefully finish these jeans. So thank you again for watching. Um, I will see you tomorrow. See ya, bye.